All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to USVA History Review by SOL Standard. Uh, again, like I keep saying, I'm glad that you're coming back. I'm glad that you're enjoying these. I'm glad that these are helping. Um, I, I really do that that you put in a little bit of work here and there uh, with these videos, and I do think you'll you'll see the benefits of them. Um, so, so as promised, uh, we are going to finish up Standard Eight. Uh, in this in this video and it's just the progressive movement now I say that is just the progressive movement however there is lots and lots of stuff uh, in here that will that will get a little confusing so make sure you take your time go back through the video once or twice um, pause at certain parts and, and stop and and really get the information in uh, again there won't be anything at the end uh, for for you to for you to do an exercise with or whatnot, um, but just go back through the video, spend the time that way. Uh, I think I think getting it that way will be the best for you to do. Um, so here you go again with the um, with the look, the sneak peek at the uh, the standards that you need to know. Uh, and here's another one here. Um, so as you can tell, it's it's lots and lots of stuff here, and um, it, it, the progressive movement was a lot. Uh, so, so this uh, us needing to know a lot of stuff is definitely uh, not not too too surprising of a thing. All right, let's get right into it. So, the definition of the progressive movement and and the ideas behind it is the government was dealing with such big changes, uh, specifically in industry and people moving out west and all that kind of different stuff that it was urged to to make some some changes. Um, and that's exactly what happened. So when two specific different times that we make big, big legislation in America is Theodore Roosevelt's Square Deal and Woodrow Wilson's New Freedom. Uh, both presidential actions uh, passed by Congress, uh, land, landmark legislation that, that gets things done. All right, let's let's get into and see why the progressive movement happened. Happen. So the first part is the excesses of the Gilded Age. Um, Gilded Age, think you know, Industrial Revolution. Think you know, people moving out west and and having these lavish farms and and having and having all that different stuff. Robber barons, things like that. Um, you know, think think Rockefeller, think Carnegie, and all of their money and all their wealth. Well. Uh, Im new immigrants are living in tenements, right? The disparity, that, that word that means uh, the difference, you know, so income difference. You have super, super rich and super, super poor. So the difference between the haves and the have-nots. Um, going back to, to laborers, the working conditions were terrible. Uh, there's there's no easy way of putting it. Dangerous work conditions, you know, you're breathing in soot and smog all day, uh, working long hours, 16 hours, 17 hours a day, uh, and then getting on the trolley, sleeping for a few hours, and coming back and doing it again. Low wages, w w earning a uh, dollar fifty a week, uh, no job security. You could just get fired for the next guy that'll that'll work for a dollar forty five a week. Uh, no benefits, nothing like that. Um, child labor, you know, having kids do things in, in, uh, in the factories. Uh, and it wasn't so much the, the boss's fault as it was, uh, the parents' fault who needed money. That, you know, ch children were, had always, always worked on farms, but now they're working in dangerous factories. And, and we see why that's, that's a bad thing. Uh, the employment of women, that, that's, you know, women working in, in the factories too, because families need the income. And then the idea of company towns, the, the idea that you did, you did everything at the, at the, at the company. You slept there. You lived in a dorm. You ate there at the cafeteria. Um, you know, you, you just you lived there so that they could get as much work out of you as as humanly possible. So that's why the progressive movement started. And here are some goals of the progressive movement: is again, we want a government controlled by the people. Uh, at that time, there was lots of political corruption. These big, big uh, robber barons and, and business owners are really influencing politics in illegal ways and what we would think of as, as dirty politics today. Um, guaranteeing economic opportunities uh, through government regulation. Um, you, you know, don't let these big companies become monopolies. That's, that's not fair. That's not what America is built on. Um, eliminate social injustices. We just talked about uh, the plight of African Americans, but we're also talking about women here. We're talking about children here. 
um, let, let's get rid of those. All right, so through all this, we do see some accomplishments, so to speak. Um, we see some in local governments. We see new forms of government happening where like a commissioner, a city manager were, were, were come up and they say, hey, look, tenements all, all up and down don't work. We need sanitation. We need uh, public transportation. So you, you really get people in to these cities uh, and you start seeing mayors and things like that. State, state governments. You have things like the referendum, initiative, recall. You have you have more people involved in politics so that people start getting more of a say. Um, child labor is almost gotten rid of during this time uh, in a slow phase out, but it, but it happens. And muckraking or or uh, you know newspaper journalists is really the reason for it. Um, describing the abuses of child labor, making people see that this is bad. Uh, and then that, that forces the passage of child labor laws. Uh, elections, like I, like I was talking about, politics was dirty at this time, and therefore people really want to get uh, politics cleaned up. Uh, so we start with primary elections. Why should the Democratic Party always choose their own candidate? Why don't we as voters choose who we want to represent us? And that, that makes for more voter turnout. Direct election of U.S. Senators. Uh, why why don't we vote for our own senators? We vote for our uh, congress or our other congressmen. Why can't we vote for these senators now? And then the secret ballot. Instead of showing everybody what what you're doing, you have the secret ballot. Now the only place that doesn't have it anymore is Iowa. Uh, when you see with the caucuses. All right. So so those are some. Let's get into uh, some more. Uh, like I said, this is a lot. Uh, labor unions are going to start up. Um, we see the horrendous um, conditions that. Uh, that laborers, that, that workers have to go through. So people start coming together and are like, hey, why don't we uh, get together and, and make some demands? Um, so you see organizations like the Knights of Labor, the AFL, the American Federation, Federation of Labor, started by Samuel Gompers, um, to come up to start working for higher wages, less hours, better working conditions, benefits, all that kind of stuff is going to come out of these labor unions. Uh, labor unions are still big, strong force in, in today's society. Um, one of their main modes of, of getting things done were uh, some strikes. Uh, say, hey, we're not going to work. Uh, specific Haymarket, Homestead, and Pullman, uh, some of these are going to get very violent. And um, But things get done after action is taken. Um, and what, the, what they get out of this is limited work hours and better working conditions. Uh, and, and that's going to include better pay, less hours, and, and benefits. All right. <sighs> Let's get some more accomplishments of the progressive movement going now. Uh, we also see the development of antitrust laws. Now, I'm not talking about trusting your boyfriend or girlfriend here. I'm talking about the trust as in uh, the economic or business sense. Uh, that big, big monopolies... Uh, of businesses can't come together anymore. So don't let monopolies happen. Don't let Rockefeller own 90% of the oil industry. Don't let Carnegie own all the steel, you know, things like that. So the Sherman Antitrust Act is passed first, and that prevents monopolies. Um, but then some of the big, rich bosses come together, and they're like, hey, aren't labor unions a trust? Uh, aren't they a monopoly? Um, so... What comes after that is the Clayton Antitrust Act, which expands on Sherman and outlaws price fixing, but also exempts unions from the Sherman Act. So uh, workers are really benefiting from progressive era uh, legislation. And then one, uh, one more uh, part of this social justice piece is going to be women's suffrage. Um, women are going to become able to vote uh, with the passage of the 19th Amendment. Um, through the strong leadership of people like Susan B. Anthony. Uh, that, that's one that Virginia definitely wants you to know. Um, this, this new, these new rights are also going to encourage women to start uh, working during World War I. Uh, and then after World War I, they're like, hey, look, uh, if, we, if we didn't work here, then, then our economy wouldn't be as good as it is today. So uh, how about you give us the right to vote? So that's exactly what's going to happen. And, the, and in 1920, the 19th Amendment is passed. Um, and, and their practices and, and their modes of, of this movement really shape uh, today's modern civil rights movement, uh, the modern women's movement, and, and others that we see today. All right, uh, that 
that is going to be it for standard eight. I, I hope you enjoyed it. I know this is a huge, huge standard, uh, but go back through, watch this video again. Uh, get, make sure that you understand the differences between some of these things. You get to know uh, all, all these progressive accomplishments. Maybe make a list a list of some things, make a web, uh, whatever helps you do this. If you have to watch it two or three times, that's fine too. They're up there, watch them, like them, do whatever you need to do, share them with your friends, it doesn't matter, as long as they are helping. You, you have a wonderful night of studying, and, and I wish you the best of luck. Have a good one.